Hi, Julia Naume is the name. Bet plan and preparedness is a topic. Someone has asked me before, Juliana, can I ever be ready enough to have a hitch fee delivery? The answer is yes, you can. How? It is called a bed plan. A bed plan is a step-by-step -step written document on the care one desires during labor, delivery and post-delivery periods. It is prepared by the pregnant mother in conjunction with her partner and or with any one of her choice in order to clearly communicate her wishes in dealing with unexpected occurrences such as complications or emergencies that may occur during pregnancy and childbirth. This is different from preconception care. This one, you seek it before you get pregnant. In fact, if you've not seen the lecture video on preconception care, just check my channel for preconception care um, video. Preconception care is done before you get pregnant. The embed plan is done once pregnancy is achieved before your delivery. Good. I can imagine someone saying this with me now, right now. The other one is before you get pregnant. This one, bed plan, is after pregnancy, before delivery. Thank you. Who is responsible for my bed plan? The pregnant or expectant mother, her, you know, her spouse, assisted by the midwife or a doctor, then with any other decision maker. There two types of interventions for developing a bed plan. The first one, bed plan that is focused on the woman's psychological and you know, physical comfort. This is practiced mainly in high resource countries where um, people go to the hostel without having to go with their own cash in hand. Everything is taken care of. So that one, you just know that the emergency, you are covered. So you just go to the hospital. So make your bed plan to suit your comfort and your, com you know, be comfortable and all that. There's another intervention that is focused on measures to ensure a safe birth with the approximate attendance and to prepare for emergencies. That is best preparedness and complication readiness. This is designed mainly for lower resource countries. You know, in some part of the world, depending on where you are, some persons actually do out-of-pocket payments. What that means is that you go to the hostel with your own cash, so you pay for your services from your pocket. So for you to have a very beautiful and huge fit, you have to plan, you know, get things in place, keep a certain amount of money, percentage of your income every month. You should set it aside, you know, hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. Then ask your doctor, if this happens, what do I do? If I go for surgery, what's the cost? So you get ready. So this is one that we see in lower resource countries. But then these things are not cast in stone. So you can freely use any intervention you want. Let's say you're in a country where you pay out of pocket and then you're very ready or probably you're enrolled in a very good health insurance scheme and then this is the scheme this year of your hospital bill. You can prepare for psychological support and, you know, comfort. But then if you can also afford the both of them, why not? I know mothers who want to have private delivery suits, you know, for, for themselves and their partners. Some hospitals have such arrangements where you just pay extra. You know, ask these questions and get to know what's available and then go on and pay for them and have a very beautiful and a comfortable um, laboring yes, process and delivery. Now the question is, what do I need to include in my bed plan? Since bed plan is individualized, it depends on the following. What you and your partner want depends on your past medical history, the available resources to you, and then the kind of job you do or where you live. You know, these things are what you consider because what is safe and practical for one pregnancy is not the same for another pregnancy. But I have some guidelines for a bed plan that you can use. Your bed plan should have the following and even more. First one is there's place of bed. Where do I want to give bed? Then a preferred skilled bed attendant. So I want a midwife or a doctor. Phones for emergency related um, you know, budgets and all that. Then a bed partner. Someone you want to labor with. Don't go alone. A support system. Someone that will be with you while you're laboring. It can be your husband, beautiful, or your sister, or your sister-in-law, a very close friend, or your mom, mother-in-law, anyone. Don't go alone. Then write down support in looking for after the home and other children if there are other children at home write it down get who you should call that's when so in labor this person will go to the house and take care of this so they can concentrate and labor you know with a peaceful mind so write it down then write down transport to health facility if you don't have your own car. You want to write down emergency driver's number, who to call when you want to go for your return visits. And then you should have an emergency transportation number as well. Tell the person, please, I can call you at any time, maybe 1 a.m., 2 a.m. Let them prepare them. And they want to see my call, just speak, you know. And then some communities have transport services. They have emergency um, system where women in labor use. Get to know these things are available to you. You don't have to have the whole money in the 
the world to have a safe delivery. If you plan it, get someone say, okay, there's this driver in our community that helps women. So get to arrange, please, uh, I'm going to give you some amount of money. Just help me. When I call you, help them, you know. So just get to know this and then write them down in case of emergencies, you know. You know, then it get a, a blood donor that matches your blood. Even part of the world where there are no blood assured bloods in the blood banks get to you know get a, a possible donor in case of an emergency get a relative that have that has a matching blood type with yours or a friend you know get these things ready write them down then make sure that people are comfortable before time just in case then sign of consent who signs for you in case of emergencies there are some parts of the world where a woman cannot sign for some procedures for herself. So please prepare ahead of time. If you're in that part of the world or in that home or that certain where your partner must sign, is the man that must sign, please start early. Let him write. No. What if he travels? So let him know who can sign or tell you that you can sign for yourself or someone that will sign. Let these things be written down so that there's somebody to call when there's an emergency. Then, of course, identify key decision makers. What if someone finds me, finds me in a place, you know, maybe I'm not talking, as God forbid. But then your bed plan that's in your folder will say who we should call for decision on your behalf. Because you won't be touched without getting a consent. You know, maybe your mother-in-law, your mom, your religious leader, anybody. Then the kind of um, delivery you want to undergo they want to have a painless delivery it's called epidural know if they are available and then get to know what is required if there's cost implication get to know then how do you want to deliver you want to have a pool birth you know all oh, this is write them down why not so my ask can i afford a bed plan what if i don't have extra money juliana i know things are expensive i know right bed plan is free of charge nobody's gonna collect any money for you the disclaimer is this making a bed plan is very detailed you have to paint all possible case scenarios and write them there so you need determination and discipline to do it then someone will ask i've delivered many times juliana do i need a bed plan ah now sister Pregnancy and delivery, no, no customer. Every time you're pregnant, you're having a unique experience and you should be equipped and ready for it. Next question is, when is the best time to make a bed plan? Now that you're pregnant, yes. In the words of Henry Ford, nothing is particularly hard if you divide it into smaller jobs. So if you start now to make your bed plan, you can adjust as occasion demands. You know, share a copy with me. I want to see your bed plan, yes. My, you know, send it to my mail, jume247 at gmail.com. Send it to me, jume247 at, jume at gmail.com. Let me see what your bed plan is like. I want to see. So please, you know, do this once again. Thank you very much for coming around to pick up tips, you know, to make your pregnancy a, a smooth one and then a safe one. So please stay connected to my network because you don't want to miss out on this regular beautiful information that will help you and your loved ones. Thank you very much and see you again.